the Sega Genesis. Whether it was number one or two in your heart, there is one number way bigger to worry about. 700. Yep, with over 700 games in its catalog, there is no chance in hell anyone can play through all of them by themselves. So I brought in a couple Genesis experts to help me get down to the nitty gritty. Hey, if we do it for the Super Nintendo, you knew we'd do it for the good old Blast processor. Not just one list, but two. So let's count down the best the Mega Drive has to offer. So, hey, I'm Stuttering Craig. I'm Daily Destin. And I'm Max Corey. For Screw Attacks, top 20 Genesis games. Numbers 20 through 11. 20. After a huge hit with the original X-Men game, a lot of comic fans were asking, what else could they possibly add? <laughs> Easy. Only one of the most badass villains in history is a playable character. Yep. In addition to playing as your traditional favorite, you can make Magneto playable after you beat him on the third level, giving X-Men fanboys like me a boner. Corey, I had to watch out for Boner Jams 2008 over there. Just keep an eye out. Yeah, it's duly noted. So in addition to playing as Magneto, we also got one of the most incredible soundtracks on the Genesis. Very true. Literally, from the second you turn on your console, you are thrust into action in Siberia with a stage even before the title screen. It's awesome. X-Men 2 was tough. It was 16-bit. It was pure X-Men, and that's why we like it. Justin, get your hands out of your pants. I'm not going to tell you again. You know, the Ninja Turtles might be the coolest thing ever. You're damn right. Even though Hyperstone Heist was marketed as an entirely different game for the Genesis, we weren't idiots. It was pretty much a direct clone of Turtles in Time, just with a run button as opposed to double pressing forward to dash. If you played one TMNT game, you played them all. It's just straight hack and slash fun. And besides, being a clone of the greatest beat em up ever isn't necessarily a bad thing. There was once a time when EA produced football titles that did not have the NFL license. There was also a time when people actually bought games that didn't have the NFL license. Taking football's violence and multiplying it times death, Mutant League football had skeletons taking on mutant dogs with massive hits along with holes and minefields to avoid. I love it! And if you didn't like how the game was going, you could always just bribe the ref. And if you didn't like that, then you could just kill the ref with one of your players, colon. That's a play on words. In a time where Final Fantasy ruled the world of RPGs on the NES and Super Nintendo, it was easy to look past RPGs on the Genesis. It's a shame too, because Shining Force really stood out amongst the pack in the early 90s. While the game didn't add anything overly revolutionary to the mix when it was released, it was just plain fun to play for an RPG. I mean, the main character's group is called Shining Force. That's like the name of a badass hair metal band. It makes it even cooler that you're trying to defeat the evil Dark Dragon! Shining Force versus the Dark Dragon! Meow, meow, meow. Ugh, you're so lame. I hate this game. Who put a game on this list where your main attack is shin kicks? You're an idiot! How can this not be on the list? It's one of the games that symbolize the Genesis. Altered Beast is all about getting buff and turning into animals to destroy dead guys. I don't know if you can get much cooler than that. Yeah, running around as some muscle-bound guy with his shirt all ripped. You know how you could get cooler than that? If you didn't play it like me. Yeah, just, just go and ask the GT community how cool they think you are. Uh, but here's a game that I love. Kid Chameleon is pretty much the story of the coolest kid in the world. Something I wish I always loved. It's all making sense now. Everyone loves power-ups, and Kid Chameleon has a ton. You can turn into a crap ton of stuff like a ninja, oh God, that's so cool. a knight, Hell yeah. Jason, I have a bonus. and a tank that shoots skeletons. He's so cool. I wish I could turn into cool things like Kid Chameleon. Destin, I got something perfect for you. Ah, uh, foiled again. Comic books are awesome. Yeah, but what if you were sucked into one to take on a bad guy who could draw enemies to take your ass out? That is Comic Zone. Easily one of the most imaginative games on any console ever, Comic Zone is what happens when you maximize a console to its fullest. Too bad no one was around to play it because it came out when the Genesis was pretty much dead. While not a huge commercial success, Out of This World definitely had a really big influence on the gaming world. Leading developers like Hideo Kojima would often say, hey, this game had a huge influence on my career. Just not like that, more Japanese. Anything that guy says influenced him has to be good. A cult hit, Out of This World was known for its cinematic effects and cutscenes. 
While this may look like crap by today's standards, this was huge back then. Think of it kind of like the original Prince of Persia, just in space and looking better. Whoa. If there was one game that summed up the 90s in video games, it would probably be Earthworm Jim. He was so zany and wacky and offbeat. And he was in an awesome game. When he returned for the sequel, we were stoked to see what kind of wackiness he would cause. If you dug Earthworm Jim 1, then Earthworm Jim 2 just tickled your cockix. What? Your, your cockix. Jim saved puppies, used one of those old people carts to get up the stairs, and even inflated his own head to get past the level. That is hilarious. And look at how cute Jim looks as a blind cave salamander carrying his adorable little gun. Wait, why would your tailbone be tickled? Can somebody explain it? How can MK be at number 11? Well, answer me this. Aside from Sonic, can you name another game that sold more Genesis's than Mortal Kombat? It's not because the game looked any better than the Super Nintendo version, because it didn't. Everyone wanted to play the game for one lone reason. Blood. Corey, you're scaring the crap out of me. Shut up, you pussy! Good point, Cor. You know, I own the Super Nintendo version and actually went out of my way to go to my friend's house who had it on the Genesis. It's amazing what a little blood will do to a game. Yeah, it makes it fun. Excellent.